I'm revealing all the secrets that planner sticker shop owners don't want you to know. Hey guys, welcome back to Confessions of a Girl Boss. My name is Chrissy and I am here to give you the confidence and tools you need to launch your online business and thrive. Today I am sharing all of the secrets that the planner sticker shop owners do not want you to know, like where to get your paper, what printer to use, where to get the best supplies. I'm gonna spill all of the secrets that I learned from four years of running my physical planner sticker shop. But if you are new here and you like these types of videos, be sure to hit that red button down below and subscribe so you never miss a video. I upload new videos every week on turning your passion into your business. Before I get started sharing all of the products with you today, anything that I can find on Amazon, I will be linking in my Amazon store, so I will leave that in the description box down below. I do earn a little bit of a commission if you do purchase anything using that link, but if you do find this video helpful, I would ask that you please use those links because it helps me out. <laughs> so opening a planner sticker shop is expensive, especially if you have to test out all of the different products that are on offer and find out what works best for you. And I feel like the general answer for people when they ask for what products people use or what paper they suggest is do your research, find what works for you. But honestly, like, I'm here to help you out. I'm here to save you a few bucks. It doesn't have to be that expensive. Obviously there is upfront costs required because you do need machines, but it doesn't have to be stressful. So let's get into everything. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start off with the most important part, but the probably the most boring part. I am no, in no way like qualified to give you legal advice, but before you plan on opening any sort of Etsy, Etsy store or Shopify store, do it legally. Figure out how you need to register your business with your state, with the IRS. Um, do all of that work, whether you wanna work with a lawyer or anything like that, that's up to you, but do all of that first. I'm not gonna tell you to do it the wrong way and just launch your shop and just kind of hope for the best. I do think it's very important to launch your planner sticker shop or any sort of online store sensibly and safely and also legally. So <laughs> definitely check out all of your different options on that front. A lot of people go into this thinking they don't have to worry about that until later, but you never know when that later will come up and when you might've missed the boat on that. Definitely just check it out. I'm not here to give that advice. So we're gonna move on from that now. <laughs> Okay, so starting off with the basics, you're gonna need some sort of printer, you're gonna need a sticker cutting machine. So the two most popular sticker cutters are Cricut and Silhouette. I did start my shop using a Cricut, but I quickly learned that, I don't, I don't know if this has changed, but I quickly learned that the area on the page that they actually let you print and cut was very, very small and I was wasting a lot of paper. Like I said, this could have changed. I used them back in 2015, but I quickly switched to a Silhouette portrait. So there are two options in the Silhouette family. I do suggest using a Silhouette unless you already have a Cricut, but if you're investing in a new machine, I would suggest using Silhouette just because that is the most common machine that people use. So you'll find a lot of tutorials on making planner stickers with Silhouette on YouTube and a lot of printable shops offer Silhouette files to go with them so you can kind of practice on that. And it's just my preferred <laughs> machine, but do your own research on that one. So there are two options when it comes to Silhouettes. There's the portrait, which is the cheaper option, and there's the cameo. I never used a Cameo. I did learn that if you mix a portrait and a Cameo together, they don't always cooperate well together. I always use portraits. I think at any given time, I think I had six portraits running at one time. I can't be 100% sure, I can't remember anymore. I do only have one right now that I honestly haven't even turned on since I closed my physical shop. You can find pretty good deals for portraits. I know a lot of times I got mine for $99. I think it was mostly on like Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but right now they are $179 on Amazon. So the reason why I liked the portrait is I just felt like it was simpler. If you only want your silhouette for planner stickers, you're not gonna need a cameo. If however, you are crafty and you wanna use it for vinyl or any other projects like that, you probably should go with the cameo because it gives you a bigger surface area to work with. The portrait, you can really only work with like eight and a half by 11, I think maybe like nine by 12 or something like that. So it is a little bit smaller, but it always fit the needs of my planner sticker shop and it was cheaper. So that's what I went with. 
Okay, so moving on to printers. I went through a lot of different printers in my planner sticker shop time. And my absolute favorite was the HP Photo NB7155. I still have one up there right now. I loved it so much. I didn't find this until I want to say like a year and a half before I closed. And honestly, it changed the game for me. I started, I believe, with an Epson, but the ink was astronomical. Then I moved over to a Canon and I used off-brand ink, but they honestly broke all the time for me. I don't know, it was the volume I was printing at or anything like that. Maybe it was the off-brand ink, I don't know. But then I moved over to a HP and I used HP Instant Ink, which if you don't know what that is, you basically pay a monthly fee and they ship a bunch of ink to you and then you pay based on like how much you print. So <laughs> I know that's kind of hard to understand. I'll leave a link to it in the description box, but it actually works out a lot cheaper. And what I liked about HP Instant Ink is you could go onto them and you can tell them, listen, Cyber Monday, Black Friday is coming up. I need a lot of ink. They will send a bunch, but you don't actually get charged for it until you use it. It's like, I don't know what they have in their ink. So it's like a Wi-Fi thing or something like that. I don't know. I got really vibrant stickers using this printer with the sticker paper I'm about to tell you about. So it's definitely worth the investment. Moving on to general supplies, let's talk sticker paper. And this is a totally taboo subject to talk about in the planner world, but I'm gonna share it with you. So I went through a lot of different sticker papers in my time. I went through semi-gloss, glossy, regular matte, removable matte, and I landed on sheet labels, and that's the name of the company, and their spectacle paper. And this is probably what you would see people call like premium matte or like back in the day, they called it premium matte, but this sticker paper gave amazing quality stickers, the colors popped on it, and it's not that expensive. So 100 sheets of the spectacle paper was $31.99, and as you bought more, it did get cheaper per sheet. So 500 sheets was $91.99, and 1,000 sheets was $181.99. So I do suggest buying a small amount, testing it out, and seeing what you like. You can always use the code free ship on sheet labels to always get free domestic shipping, so that saves a ton. I remember when I was living in Canada for sheet labels, I was literally paying like $300 for shipping. It was insane, but I just loved the paper so much. But for domestic shipping to the US, use free ship so that you don't have to pay a dime. Mailers and cello bags or bubble mailers or anything like that. I flip-flopped back and forth between Mailers USA and Uline. Uh, mailers USA did offer pretty good deals on small bubble mailers, which I switched to towards the end of my shop just because they were a little bit lighter, but you did have to add like a little like cardboard piece in there to make sure that they didn't bend. So that was kind of annoying. So it's kind of up to you on what you prefer. A lot of people use the rigid mailers and I always got them from Uline and I always got my cello bags from them too. For additional marketing stuff like postcards that you might see in people's orders or even like journaling cards or what else did I get from them? Ooh, I got like backgrounds for my Instagram to keep like my pictures really on brand and I'll leave some examples here. I always used Vistaprint and this is actually where I bought my papers for my rings and strings kit. So like I had a kit that you can make like dashboards and dividers and just kind of use like scrapbook paper. I got that from Vistaprint too. They always have a sale running and they're pretty affordable. So definitely check them out but I loved the backgrounds that I got. <laughs> it's literally just like poster paper that I got with like the patterns for my branding. And I loved when I got that because my pictures were just like always on brand and it made me so happy. So obviously you're gonna need cutting mats and blades. I flip flopped again between getting my blades on Amazon and getting them in a place like Michael's. I find a lot of the blades that I got from Amazon were not as good quality as the ones that I got in Michaels. I don't know if that was just me, but I do know a few other sellers also said that. So sometimes it's worth it just to bite the bullet and pay a bit more so they last a bit longer. But for the cutting mats, especially if you're using a silhouette, their mats suck. <laughs> so I always use the Cricut mats and they used to have a size that worked. They used to have a nine by 12, but now they only have a 12 by 12. So what you would have to do if you have a portrait, just trim it down with the scissors, but they last so much longer and they're just way better quality. Some additional stuff I wanted to mention that might be handy to have, but like you don't necessarily need. I used a laser printer for printing my invoices on. I didn't like to use my HP printer. I keep looking up at that printer as if it matters. I didn't like to use my HP printer because it used a lot more ink 
and the laser printer was just kind of more economical in that sense. And I already had it from the time I tried to do foil, but foil was my arch nemesis and I never wanted to do that again. So I used my laser printer for invoices. You can also buy a paper trimmer, which comes in really handy. So I would suggest having one. I will leave that link to my Amazon store down below. And then I also had a label printer, which is <laughs> so, so handy. If you're just starting out and you're not getting a lot of orders, you don't need this. But if you do have a lot of orders, I highly suggest getting a Dymo 4XL. You can use either their labels or off-brand labels, but it just makes label printing so much easier. I remember towards the end, mine actually broke and I was devastated. It was so annoying having to print them for my laser printer until I fixed it. So I highly suggest a Dymo 4XL. If I missed any supplies that you can think of, let me know in a comment down below and I can definitely let you know where I got them or if I even used them or not. But those are everything that I really used. You don't need a lot of stuff to run a planner, sh a planner shop, but it does kind of take a little bit of upfront cost. So the next thing that you're gonna need to decide is where to get your graphics. So you have two options here. If you're artistic, design them yourself and you can use a platform like your iPad for Procreate. You can use Illustrator, you can use Photoshop or you could use the Silhouette software yourself. Or if you don't wanna go the design yourself route, you can buy graphics from Etsy or a place like Creative Market. Just make sure when you're buying the graphics that you do have the right to use them commercially because some artists don't allow that. And when you're running a planner sticker shop or any sort of shop where you're profiting off of somebody's artwork, you have to have the commercial rights to use that artwork in the products that you're selling. Next thing you're gonna to have to decide is what platform you wanna use. So I do have a video coming out on if you should open a new shop on Etsy or Shopify. You have a few other options. You have something like Squarespace or Big Cartel to name two other ones. I know some other people use WooCommerce if they use WordPress, but you do have some options. So I will have a video on Wednesday all about if you should open a new shop on Etsy or Shopify and what you should consider between the two. So definitely stay tuned for that. Next, you have to price your products for profit, and this is so important. So do some research, look at the community, see what they're pricing their products at, but also don't be scared to go a little bit higher. If you have a premium product and you know how much your time is worth, don't be afraid to go higher with your products. I wouldn't say go like tons higher, but definitely take into consideration if you decide to open on Etsy, the Etsy fees that you're gonna be paying about 10 to 15%, definitely take into consideration how much it costs to run a Shopify store, but just don't forget to take into consideration your time that it takes to print and cut and design all of these stickers, because that is so important. If you're not up to date on Etsy fees or how much it costs to run a Shopify store, I will leave a few videos linked down below sharing kind of a breakdown of that, just so you know a little bit more before you jump in. So the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is marketing. And this is the most important. So you're gonna to wanna to utilize something like Instagram and hashtags, Facebook groups. Definitely utilize Pinterest. I don't think enough people in the planner community utilize Pinterest. It is basically a search engine where your pins never have an expiration date. So definitely utilize Pinterest collaborate with other shops, collaborate with other influencers on Instagram. You don't have to target big influencers that have like 50,000 followers that you're scared to approach. You can approach smaller influencers. If you approach 10 influencers that have a thousand followers, that's 10,000 people that are getting their eyeballs on your products. I mean, hopefully. I know algorithms suck, but you know what I mean. It's still a decent amount of people. So definitely utilize that join the community and participate in the community and let people know that you're not just here to promote, but you're actually a planner girl who loves planning. And of course, I don't wanna harp on about it too much, but you guys know I am so pro email list. So start an email list from day one. Think about something free that you can give people to incentivize them to join your email list. It is so invaluable. It's way more valuable than your Instagram feed in the long run, so start an email list. I'll leave a video that I did about email lists in the description box down below. My last tip for opening a planner sticker business is if this is going to be a business that you rely on, that you invest time and money into, treat it like a business from day one. Know that it's going to take some time to get traction and you're gonna have to put a lot of hard work into it, but your efforts will pay off as long as you stay focused.
So that is it for this video. Let me know what you think in a comment down below. Let me know if you are planning on opening a planner sticker business or if you just recently opened one. And I hope this video is helpful. Let me know if you like them and if you want me to do more planner sticker related videos and what videos to do. And I will definitely do that for you. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that red button and subscribe, or you can hit my face right here. And if you want to keep on learning, check out those two videos to my left on the screen <laughs> and you can keep on learning. So have a great day, stay safe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.